I am Yoshihiro Kawaoka from Institute of Medical Science and University of Tokyo. Today, I'm going to speak about our research on SARS-CoV-2. Our research on SARS-CoV-2 has been made possible thanks to the collaboration of many hospitals and doctors as listed here. Dr. Omagari, the speaker of the same session, has given us many samples. I'd like to take this opportunity to express our appreciation. With regards to our research, as I mentioned, we received samples from Dr. Omagari and others from National Center for Global Health and Medicine, Drs. Nakajima, Takahashi, and Suzuki from National Institute of Infectious Diseases carried out pathological analysis of the hamster. Dr. Takeda from National Institute of Infectious Diseases shared with us cells used to isolate the virus. Doctors Lober and Crawford from University of Wisconsin analyzed the cat. Dr. Peter Hoffman, who took the lead in our research at the American Research Institute. At the Institute of Medical Science at University of Tokyo, Dr. Imai took the lead. We received funding from Japan Agency for Medical Research and Development, or AMED. These are the topics I'd like to cover today. The first topic is about animal model. Infected animal model is necessary to reproduce the human disease so that we can gain knowledge on COVID-19 and develop antiviral drug and vaccine. In our lab, we found that SARS-CoV-2 proliferates well in cats and hamsters. SARS-CoV-2 was found from a cat owned by a COVID-19 patient. There were reports from zoos in New York and Barcelona on SARS-CoV-2 infected tigers and lions. In our lab, we inoculated cat with SARS-CoV-2 to study the viral replication in cat. We also placed uninfected cat in the same cage with the inoculated cat to see whether the virus is transmitted. When cat is inoculated with SARS-CoV-2, there was much proliferation of the virus in the cat. And the virus was easily transmitted to the cat in the same cage. The nasal swab sample contained more than 10,000 infectious viruses. Furthermore, these cats were completely asymptomatic. So we found that SARS-CoV-2 was transmitted from human to a cat and the virus spread among cats without exhibiting any symptom. However, we do not know at that moment whether the virus can be transmitted from cat to human. Sequelae of patients who recovered from COVID-19 have become an issue. There may be a variety of causes to the sequelae, and in our lab, we focused on dyspnea. The cats, I mentioned earlier, which were infected with SARS-CoV-2, did not show any symptom. We euthanized the cat on day 28 following infection to study the lung. 
though the animal was completely asymptomatic, even on day 28, we observed these legions of pneumonia. Similar things could be happening in humans, leading to the after effect of dyspnea. Next, I'd like to speak about hamsters. We took CT images on days 7 and 16 following SARS-CoV-2 infection to study the progression of pneumonia. The pneumonia is shown in white. We observed the spread of pneumonia on day 7. On day 16, we observed much recovery, as you can see. Thus, we found that CT images of hamster infected with SARS-CoV-2 show similar lesions that we see in patient CT images. So we come to know that hamster is a useful model for SARS-CoV-2 infection. Using this hamster model, we study the impact of a specific amino acid mutation. When the virus first appeared in Wuhan, China, the position 614 of spike protein was amino acid D. As the virus entered Europe, position 614 was changed to amino acid G, and that virus spread extensively. At our lab, in collaboration with Dr. Ralph Barrick of the University of North Carolina, we compared the original Wuhan virus and the European virus in terms of their infectivity. The experimental method is as follows. We infected a hamster with the virus and on the following day placed non-infected hamster in the same cage. But these two hamsters are separated with mesh partitions placed 5 cm apart so they do not come into a direct contact. In this way, virus transmission from infected hamster to non-infected hamster occurs only through droplets or aerosol. Four days after the non-infected hamster was placed in the cage, we checked the state of infection. We compared two types of virus in eight pairs respectively. There was viral transmission in both viral types in all of the eight pairs. Then we checked the transmission on day two. In Wuhan type of virus, which is the original type, there was no transmission in any of the eight pairs, whereas in case of European type, transmission was observed in five of the eight pairs. We mixed Wuhan type and European type on one to one ratio and inoculated that mixture to the hamster. Though the original ratio was 1 to 1, in the hamster, the European type has become the mainstream. We grounded the lung of this hamster and inoculated that to the next hamster with grounded lung. Then the European type of virus proliferated even more. When we repeat the same process again, Wuhan type of virus disappeared with only the European type remaining. So compared to Wuhan type, the European type of virus proliferates more in hamster and they are more transmittable among hamsters. Next, we use this animal model to study treatment. A variety of drugs have been used in clinical practice. 
As a result, we come to know that remdesivir is the only antiviral drug effective for COVID-19. However, based on the global study on remdesivir conducted by WHO, the drug was reported to be ineffective. In our lab, we injected the serum taken from a hamster which was infected and recovered from COVID-19 into a hamster on the following day or day two following its SARS-CoV-2 infection. We compare their viral load in the lung with that of untreated SARS-CoV-2 infected hamster on day four. When the animal was treated on the following day, the pulmonary viral load was reduced to one hundredth. Even with the treatment on day two, the pulmonary viral load was reduced to one hundredth more or less. Therefore, high efficacy is expected with the treatment using serum, plasma, or antibody. In our lab, we prepared human monoclonal antibody from patient's blood and injected the antibody to hamster the day after the animal was infected with SARS-CoV-2 to study the reduction in pulmonary viral load. In the hamster injected with monoclonal antibody, the pulmonary viral load was reduced to 10 thousandths. In our lab, in collaboration with business, we plan to start the clinical study before the end of the next year. Using this experimental system, we study the efficacy of various drugs in hamsters. The result was that none of the studied uh, drugs showed efficacy. Meanwhile, we studied favipiravir or Avigan in detail. We studied its efficacy as a treatment drug using the same protocol. We also studied its preventive effect using protocol for preventive study in which the drug is started from the day before the infection. In both treatment and preventive regimens, compared to untreated animal, the pulmonary viral load was reduced to one-tenth. Therefore, Fabipiravil showed some efficacy at least in hamster. And next, I'd like to talk about vaccine. There are various types of vaccines. The vaccines preceding others include adenoviral vector vaccine, which is manufactured by AstraZeneca, and mRNA vaccine made by Moderna and BioNTech. Vaccine from BioNTech has been authorized for emergency use in some countries. In our lab, we collaborated with KIM Biotics for the development of inactivated vaccine and live vaccine. For the development of mRNA vaccine, we collaborate with Daichi Sankyo and Professor Ken Ishii from the Institute of Medical Science, the University of Tokyo. For the development of subunit vaccine, we collaborate with MAB, a Manufacturing Technology Association of Biologics. Today, I'm going to briefly explain about inactivated vaccine and subunit vaccine. In an inactivated vaccine, virus is inactivated, so it does not replicate. The inactivated vaccine was intramuscularly injected into hamster twice, and then the hamster was infected with SARS-CoV-2 to study the viral replication. Without the inactivated vaccine injection, the virus proliferated significantly in nose and in the lung. With the injection of the inactivated vaccine, virus was not detected from almost all of the hamster. Therefore, high efficacy is expected with the inactivated vaccine. Next is about subunit vaccine. In subunit vaccine, you artificially make a part of virus, in this case, its protein on the surface of the virus. This was then mixed with adjuvant, which enhances the efficacy of the vaccine, and intermuscularly injected into the hamster twice. 
Then the hamster was infected with SARS-CoV-2 to study the inhibition of viral replication. The result was that in all the hamsters inoculated with the subunit vaccine, the viral proliferation in the nose and the lung was inhibited. Namely, just like the inactivated vaccine, high efficacy is expected with the subunit vaccine. Next, I'd like to talk about the usefulness of a mask. You could be infected with SARS-CoV-2 when you touch something contaminated with the virus or through the inhalation of virus contained in the droplet or in the aerosol. However, the possibility of transmission by aerosol traveling a long distance is currently considered to be low. We studied the effectiveness of a mask against the droplet and aerosol. The SARS-CoV-2 virus is sprayed into the box through a nebulizer. An artificial ventilator is used for breathing to study the effectiveness of a mask. Dr. Ueki, a project associate professor in our lab, conducted this experiment. He designed the experimental device from scratch, purchased the materials, assembled them, and prepared this experimental system. We placed the system in the biological safety cabinet of BSL-3 to carry out the experiment. To secure safety, we use the biological safety cabinet so the virus will not be released in the room. The virus is released from the mouth using a nebulizer. We use this artificial ventilator for a large animal to simulate human breathing and study the effectiveness of a mask. On the exhalation side, the virus is released from a nebulizer with a speed of moderate cough. The particle diameter released from the nebulizer is 5.5 micrometer. On the inhalation side, the ventilator simulated the human breathing at rest. The diameter of the tube is that of a human trachea. The distance from the mouse to this virus uh, trapper is the distance from mouse to the branching of airway. This is where the virus is collected. There is a filter made of gelatin. The virus is attached and uh, trapped here. This membrane promptly dissolves in the culture solution and the virus is collected. We studied a cloth mask, a medical mask, and N95 mask. In the experiment using N95, we found that the virus could enter the gap between the N95 mask and the face, so we closed the gap with a tape, which we referred to as N95 fit condition. Altogether, these are the four conditions to study the effectiveness of the mask. First, when a mask is used on the inhaler, a cloth mask reduced the entry of the virus by 17%, a medical mask about 50%, N95 mask about 60%, and N95 fit 80%. On the other hand, when a mask is placed on the exhaler, the viral release was contained by about 70 to 80 percent with both a cloth and a medical mask. Even higher effect was observed with N95. These results show is that when an infected person is not wearing a mask, the virus is constantly released through a droplet and aerosol, and in, even if you are wearing a mask, certain amount of the virus could pass through. However, 
When an infected person wears a mask, the amount of virus release is reduced, so there's less virus passing through. Therefore, it is important for everybody to wear a mask. Next, I'd like to talk about virus detection and antigen detection kit. The standard sample for SARS-CoV-2 detection is the nasopharyngeal swab. Although the viral load is slightly less, the saliva also contains a lot of virus. Therefore, both nasopharyngeal swab and saliva are used for diagnosis. The benefit of saliva sampling is that you can take a sample on your own. The slide compares the viral load of nasopharyngeal swab and saliva of the same person. The connected line indicates that the viral genome volume of the same person are shown. In these patients, there are more virus in the saliva. Among these, these four patients had virus in the saliva, but no virus was detected from the nasopharyngeal swab. And these, there are more of them, are the patients who had more virus in the nasopharyngeal swab. In these five patients, virus was found in the nasopharyngeal swab, but none was detected from the saliva. Some patients had the same volume of virus from the two sites. These are the patients who have a high volume of virus in the saliva, and you have to be careful since their droplets contain a lot of virus. The standard test for diagnosis is a PCR. This method has a high sensitivity, but sometimes it takes time to get the result. On the other hand, we, the rapid diagnostic kit detecting antigen is quick, but it is said that the sensitivity is the issue. In our lab, we study the sensitivity of antigen detecting kits which are made and marketed in Japan. These kits recommend the use of swab from nasopharynx or nasal vestibule. But in our lab, we studied other samples as well. These are the numbers of samples detected positive by each kit among the 78 PCR positive samples. As you can see, the sensitivity of the kit varies to a great extent. In this kit, out of 78 samples, only 16 samples were found positive. On the other hand, the kit with the highest sensitivity detected 30 out of 78 samples positive. Let me now explain the result of the kit with the highest sensitivity. These show samples in which infectious virus was detected. Although all the samples contained infectious viruses, the kit with the best sensitivity found these samples negative. Namely, when the viral load is small, the kit found the virus containing sample negative. That means the sample with the virus was missed. When there's a high viral load in the sample, the kit found it positive. And this is an important point. This could be very useful depending on the way it is used. In the United States, Abbott markets rapid test kit at a price of only $5. These scenes make us feel nostalgic of a good old day. We all want to go back to the way we used to live. However, current way of life will continue until very efficacious antiviral drug is developed or until many people are inoculated with very effective vaccine. So this is my personal proposal. 
I propose the use of antigen detection kit. The kit can detect the virus in 15 minutes. However, there's a possibility that the infectious virus is missed. There's also a possibility of false positive, meaning negative sample is misjudged as positive. But a sample with high viral load will definitely be judged positive. That means those shedding a lot of virus can be captured for sure. Also, it is expected that the kit sensitivity will continue to improve. Furthermore, when I talk to Japanese kit manufacturers, they say they can make profit out of a kit sold at 500 yen. Therefore, by using the kit at the entrance of a large gathering like this or at the entrance of a restaurant, I propose to grant entry to only those with a negative result. In order for this to work, there should be a system in which individuals can get hold of a kit. We also need to decide on what to do when there's a positive result at the entrance. When these are put in place, it may be possible to go back to the way we used to live even before the development of antiviral drug or vaccination. So these are the summary of my talk today. Hamster is a useful animal for SARS-CoV-2. Inactivated or subunit vaccine is expected to be highly protective of infection. Antigen detection kit has a possibility of missing sample containing positive virus, but the kit could be useful depending on the way it is used. That's all. Thank you very much.